presence. I got something on my heart. It's been on my heart for a few days. I want to preach tonight. Amen. The Lord be in my help for a little while. Amen. I want to let somebody know tonight that you can make sure that you're ready to have church. Amen. You can make sure that your heart is prepared every time you come in those doors. I'm not going to let anything hinder me. Amen. I, I, it, it would be very easy as a pastor or preacher to get up in the pulpit every service and just preach on hindrances because it seems that we live in a constant state of being hindered. It seems that that's just a constant state we live in. It'd be so easy and an easy target. But I think the best thing we can do is just to make sure that we've got everything right between us and God. We've got everything right. We've got no all against anybody. We've got our hearts right. We're ready to worship God. And we're ready to, to, to do what God would have us to do. That is the most important thing is that we're right with the Lord. It's important that we're right. Amen. It's important. You can't get to heaven unless you are. Amen. That's not my words. That's God's words. Amen. Hosea chapter number six. I want to read a few scriptures here. Familiar reading. Amen. Verse number one. Stand if you're able. Hosea chapter six, verse one. If you found your place, say, I got it. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn. He will heal us. He hath smitten. He will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Joshua 24 and 15, one verse of scripture, Brother Bucky read this last week, and I'm just going to paraphrase it. He said, Joshua said, choose you this day whom ye will serve. I'm just going to paraphrase it like we probably quoted, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I choose revival. Amen. I choose revival. Hallelujah. I choose revival. Thank you for standing tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I choose revival. Amen. Did you know that it's a choice? Amen. You made a choice to be here tonight. You made a choice what you were going to wear. I mean, if you're old enough, sometimes my kids, even at their young age, want to say what they ain't, uh, don't want to wear and what they don't want to do. But at a young age, I mean, you know, even as long as they're still living in the house, my wife has got precedence over what they wear and what they put on and what they look like when they walk out of the house. Amen. But they, they, they want to choose. But, but you know, we as, we as adults and even, even teenagers and kids, we make a lot of choices in life. We choose whether we want to eat certain foods. We choose whether we want to smile when we see somebody or whether we want to frown. We choose to whether we want to, to, to uh, you know, go, go out to eat or whether we want to stay at home. We make choices in our daily life. But when it comes to our spirit life, a lot of times we choose to go to the house of God, but it seems that's the last choice that we make. We choose to go to the house of God, or let me, let me just rephrase that. Sometimes that's the last positive choice we make on a Sunday because we choose to go to the house of God, and then we choose to stay in our seat. We choose not to pray at the altar. We choose not to worship. Come on now. I want to chastise you. Understand? We make choices in everything that we do, and it's important that we choose to give all to God. Amen. I choose revival. Where does that come from? Every revival is born in a spirit of prayer. Amen. It's born and rooted. I want to give you just a few things here tonight that I'm going to preach to you real quick. Amen. I choose revival. But before I can choose revival... I choose to have a prayer life. Anytime we turn our attention to God and we speak to Him, we are praying. Our praying can take on many forms. We pray in private. Sometimes we pray in public. Sometimes we pray in loud voices. Other times we whisper our prayer and we pray in silence. Sometimes we set aside times to pray. Other times we pray uh, uh, spontaneously. We pray 
in all types of positions and postures. Sometimes we sit, we stand, we kneel, sometimes we lie down, we pray when we walk, we pray when we drive, we pray when we rest, we pray at home, we pray at church, we pray at work, we pray when we go on vacation, at least I hope you do, we pray with our hands up. We pray with our heads down. We pray with our heads down and our hands up. We pray with our eyes open. We pray with our eyes closed. You know, the Bible speaks of many forms of prayer. It speaks of many places of prayer, different postures for prayer, different circumstances for prayer. But yet the Bible does not exalt any form, place, posture, or circumstance for prayer above another. Amen. Jesus prayed while he was here. He prayed while he was standing. He was sitting. He was kneeling possibly in other positions as well. Did you know that we can pray anywhere, anytime, about anything, in any posture? Amen. This is what prayer is. Paul said it's praying always. The word always carries the idea of at all times, in all seasons, at every opportunity. The Jews in Paul's day had a set time every day that they prayed. Amen. The Muslims in our day have five specific times that they pray every day. Did you know that Christians also have a specific set time for prayer? Did you know that? Did you know that? Christians have a You didn't know that? A time, you know what time that we have set aside for prayer? The Bible says it's always. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you thought I was going to give you a time and a date stamp. No, sir. It's always. And the Bible speaks of this. Romans chapter 12. He said, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Colossians 4 and 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says to pray without ceasing. There is no time when we do not need to pray. Amen. There is no time when we cannot pray. Amen. There is no time when God will not be listening and when he will not hear us. Amen. To pray always does not mean that we walk around in an attitude of formal prayer. Neither Jesus nor his disciples did that. Amen. To pray always does not mean that we follow a ritualistic prayer and we recite something from a book. Amen. To pray always does not mean that we count beads or we repeat some memorized prayer. That's what pagans do. Amen. But to pray always means I live in a constant awareness of God and his presence. To pray always means that the soul is ever reaching up towards God. To pray always means we see everything and every experience uh, as a kind of prayer to God. What are you saying? I'm saying when I'm tempted, uh, I call on him and I ask him for help. Uh, when I see sin and wickedness, uh, I call on him to work in the situation uh, and to work it out for his glory. Uh, when I see something beautiful, uh, I give God thanks for that. Uh, when I enter in time of trouble, uh, I look to God for help and deliverance. Uh, when I weep, I lean on God for support. Uh, when I'm happy, I give my heart to God uh, in thanksgiving. Uh, when I meet a sinner, I ask God uh, to convict them and save them uh, and give me the witness uh, that I can lean and witness to them. Uh, when life is lived in that way, uh, it becomes an ever ascending prayer to the Lord. Uh, yes, there'll be times that you get alone with God uh, and you call out to God. Uh, that means you'll find a place of prayer. There'll be times uh, when we do that, but most of the time, uh, we'll live in a continual state of talking to God and asking God for mercy, asking God for help, asking God for guidance. The idea is this. He said in Ephesians 6, 16, watching thereunto with all perseverance. It means I've got to be alert. I've got to keep my eyes open. I've got to look at the situation around me. I've got to be steadfast. I've got to be constant. I've got to be persistent. Did you know that God honors the always prayer? I said, did you know that God honors the watchful, persevering prayers of the people? Yes, I choose revival. But in order for revival to get here, I choose prayer. I choose to get myself ready for revival. 
Does anybody else choose to get yourself ready for a while? Amen. If you don't mean it, don't raise your hand. But do you choose to get yourself ready for the Bible? I choose to get myself ready. My wife and I have been talking about this. I would choose to get our home ready. Come on now. I'm not going to live in, my, in a rut. We've been talking about this lately. I'm not going to live in a rut. I'm not going to live in a state of being beat down. I'm not going to live in that state of letting the enemy worry my mind, bombard my mind. Uh, we've made up our minds collectively uh, as a husband and a wife uh, that we are not going to live that way. Uh, so you know what we said? We had this conversation this past week, uh, and I literally looked at her, and that's exactly what I said. Uh, I said, baby, I choose revival. Uh, I choose revival in my home. Uh, I choose revival in my marriage. Uh, I choose revival in my family. I choose the Bible in this church. Oh, come on now. We done had enough of letting the devil run our lives. Some of you in here tonight need to shut off that mask and realize that I've had enough of the devil ruining my life. I choose to let it go. I choose to get past it. I choose revival. I choose prayer. What else do I choose? I choose the word. The Bible calls itself the word of God, the word of the Lord, the word of Christ, the word of life, the word of truth, the word of faith, and just simply the word. Jesus Christ is the living word. He was the word made flesh, and the Bible is the written word. The living word is revealed in the written word, and the written word leads us to the living word because they are one. I said the living word leads us to the written word and the written word leads us to the living word because the word is the word. It's like a seed that produces eternal life inside of us. The word is like milk that nourishes the new Christian. It's like meat that gives strength to a mature saint. It's like water that refreshes and cleanses us. It's like bread that's ever fresh and meant for daily consumption. It's like gold. It's priceless. It's like honey. It's sweet to the taste. It's like a fire because it'll burn sin. And it's a hammer that will demolish evil. But the word also is a lamp under my feet. It's a light unto my path. It's a mirror that reveals to me the things inside that I need to get right. It's a sword that'll separate the flesh and a separate the spirit. Hallelujah. It's an anchor that you can depend on in troubled times. And it's supernatural in power. What are you saying? I choose revival, but I choose the word and I choose prayer to get me in a place that I can be revived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe we need revival? Amen. Brother Vic, you just preaching this because we start revival on the 15th. Oh, Jesus. If you think the only time I'm going to preach about revival is when we got revival scheduled, then you don't know my heart. We need to live in a constant state of being revived. Can you say amen? Amen. I need to know if you hear me and you agree with me. We need to live in a constant state of revival. We need to live in a constant state of awareness. It says I've got to make sure that I am ready. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we think that revival means that we're in a state of jumping and running uh, and crying and hooping and hollering. Uh, oh, I believe in all of that. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. If all we're doing is running, jumping, hooping, crying and hollering just for the sake of making noise and movement, then we might as well go to a dance club and do the same thing. Uh, but you see what I I'm doing uh, is I'm rejoicing in my Savior. Uh, I'm rejoicing because people are getting saved. Uh, I'm thankful for what God has done for me. Uh, I've watched him heal and deliver, friend. Uh, and I believe in all of that. But we'll tell you, we need to get to a place uh, that we get on the altar uh, and let the altar change our life. Uh, we need to get in the Word uh, and let the Word change our life. Uh, so many times we want to live uh, in a constant state of opinion. Uh, it was told the other day uh, that first generation people had principles uh, second generations uh, had decisions uh, and third generations on out uh, all they have is opinions uh, it makes sense to me uh, because you look at grandmas and grandpas uh, they had principles uh, you look at mamas and daddies uh, many of them had decisions uh, then you look at the next generation uh, and many of them has got an opinion well the bible says yes uh, but I think I'm going to do it my way uh, oh yeah go ahead and do it your way 
if you want to, uh, you'll find yourself in a heap of trouble. Uh, I can tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I choose revival. Uh, I said I choose revival. Uh, I choose all time. Uh, soul saving. Uh, soul stirring. Uh, soul sanctifying. Uh, soul filling revival. Hallelujah. That's why I change. What do you change? Amen. 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 Woe is us if we're waiting for our favorite pet preacher to get in the pulpit just so we can show up and show out. You've got preacher religion. You've got faith in a man and not in God. Oh, I remember as a young teenager. Oh, I remember when the pastor would get up, he'd say, such and such is having a revival. Or he'd say, we're having a revival. Or such and such is coming by. And, you know, so most of the time, uh, it was people that would love to hear. Because, you know, we heard like, just evangelists and preachers coming through. Uh, but I can tell you, there was a time or two that the pastor get up. He'd say, brother, so-and-so is going to be with us a week from Sunday night. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I really don't care for his preaching. Did me want a good man? I got into my adult life and I think at one point in our marriage my wife and I had a conversation about this we talked about that because such and such said they're having a revival somewhere and me and my wife said you know what we're going to that revival we're going to that revival Come on now, I know we've all got favorite men that we like to hear preach. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying just because you like to hear a man preach, you got preacher religion. But if the only time you show up and show out of church is when that man's in the pulpit, you have got preacher religion. If he's the only man that can get you on your feet, and get you moving, you've got faith in a man and not in God. But you know what? My wife and I begin to talk about that. I said, I'm gonna go, we're going to go on the church. Uh, we're going to hear God preach. Uh, and you know what happened? We went that night. Uh, and I'm just going to be honest with you. It, 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 it might have been uh, just a normal preaching. I'm going to tell you something. If a man's called by God uh, and God's placing an anointing on his life and he gets in the pulpit and opens the unadulterated word of God to preach, you better open your ears and listen uh, because there's no telling what God will lay on that man's heart. That's for your soul. And if you reject the word of God from a man just because you don't want to hear him, woe is you because you're rejecting God's word. You're not rejecting a man. You can reject the man all you want to. But when you ain't listening to God, you're rejecting God, friend. I'm going to tell you something. Don't insult a man. You let God do the work. I'm going to tell you something. We need to choose what we want to happen in our life. You want to keep going the way you're going. You want to keep walking in the direction. Go ahead and walk that way, friend. I don't know about you, but I choose revival. I choose the Spirit of God. I pray that God bless revival. Fall on every one of you. I've called your names from corner to corner, from the back in my prayer. prayer, I choose the word, and I choose the spirit. Read your scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse number 12, the Bible says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. He said, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, amen. You shall live. We we'll say it, kill the flesh. Amen. You mortify the deeds of the body. Ye shall live. And he says this, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I choose prayer. I choose the word. And I choose to be led by the Spirit. Uh, you want a recipe? There's your recipe. Amen. For those of you that like three points, uh, there's your three points. Uh, I choose prayer. I choose the word. Uh, and I choose the Spirit. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll give it to you better than that. Uh, revival is prayer. prayer 
bread, uh, word fed, and spirit led. Hallelujah. That's exactly what revival is. Uh, and I choose the spirit of God, uh, the child of God. We've got a blessed communion uh, with the Holy Spirit of a living God. Uh, it was in that relationship, uh, oh, that was predicted by the Lord Jesus Christ uh, himself. Uh, the spirit of God uh, will spend time with the redeemed. Uh, and this is the truth that the saint of God uh, cannot take for granted. Uh, he leads us uh, and he teaches us uh, in all that we need to know uh, to live for the glory of God. Uh, why do I need to pray? Uh, why do I need to get into the word? Uh, because I need to be knowing what it is uh, to be led by the spirit uh, of an almighty God. Friend, uh, I need to be led by the spirit. Uh, I don't need to be led by faith, uh, but I need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Uh, I need to be led by the spirit. Uh, the spirit's not going to lead me. Uh, He's not going to lead me uh, into a place that messes my mind up. Uh, but the Spirit of God will lead me uh, and guide me into all truth. Uh, that I may know what God has in store for me. <laughs> He'll speak to your heart. He'll tell you all things. He'll guide you. He'll warn you. He'll lead you. He'll feed you. He'll comfort you. He'll lift you up. He'll chastise you. <laughs> He'll teach you the truth. I said he'll teach you the truth. In a world that has woke themselves to the truth. I'm afraid that they've woke themselves so much that they fell asleep. They're not woke at all. They're asleep. You hear me? They're not woke a bit. I can tell you what they are. They're, they're, they're influenced by spirit and it ain't the spirit of God that I got influenced by the demonic lecture uh, that tells him well you can do this you can do that uh, I was telling Brother David this morning I believe it was after Sunday school I was talking about it uh, and I'm telling you this I said this the other Wednesday night I'm going to say it again uh, when I see some things coming up in ads the other day uh, I begin to just kind of begin to draw my attention uh, then I see somebody else saying something uh, about some new movie they made about Jesus uh, 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 the revolution of Jesus or the realization of I don't know what it was, uh, but I begin to look into that and read about it and come to find out one of the main characters uh, that they made in that movie. Now, let me just tell you something. Uh, anytime I see Jesus being exalted uh, and I see the world jumping in and loving it, uh, I'm telling you, I, 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 on, on the surface, I'm like, wow, at least somebody's loving Jesus. Uh, but then I begin to look a little deeper into it uh, and I realize uh, that they don't want Jesus. Uh, they want something that conforms to their lifestyle. Uh, they don't want to conform to his word. Uh, and his way, but they want him to conform to their way, and that's exactly what's happening. Let me tell you, church, don't be deceived, and go out and look at that mess. The main character, if I'm not mistaken, for that movie was a man that said he was a great evangelist, but it's told that his message he got when he was tripping on LSD, and he was a, a, a closet homosexual. That's not a man you need to look after, you hear me? You need to look after the real Jesus, who said flesh is to die and the spirit must be made alive. I said flesh and self has to die and the only way that can happen is through prayer and the word and being spirit led. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We want it our way. I want it my way. I want to do it my way. I want to do it my way. I want to live the way I want to live. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, but what I do find in that word is when I will give myself to God and let myself be aligned to his word. It'll lead me unto life and to life everlasting. Amen. That word had never led me out into sin. It's kept me from a multitude of sin. It ain't never led me into a false heretical doctrine. Oh, but it's kept me on the right doctrine. Did you hear me? It ain't never led me down a path uh, that I did not know where I was going uh, and lead me somewhere I did not know where I was at. Uh, but every place I've ever went to uh, with the word, I can tell you this. Uh, it might not have knew where I was going, uh, but when I come out on the other side, uh, I'm so glad that I trusted in his word. I'm so glad that I looked to the word. I'm so glad that I knew how to pray. I'm so glad I was raised up knowing how to pray and knowing how to call on God. If you were raised up that way, you ought to thank God every day that you had grandparents and parents that taught you how to pray, that you had a mama and daddy that showed you how to pray, that you had friends that prayed with you. Thank God for the environment I was raised up 
me. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, in 2023, uh, I choose revival. Uh, I choose the word. Uh, I choose the spirit. Uh, I choose prayer. Uh, I choose to be alive. We had enough dead church to last us an entire lifetime. Thing is, I could probably call each one of you uh, in the vision to the side uh, and say, what you think about it? Uh, do we need to be more active in church? Uh, and I guarantee you, I get a 100% response. Uh, that's right, Pastor. Uh, we need to be more active in church. Uh, lest our kids and our grandkids, uh, lest our, our friends, uh, lest they get cold and indifferent. Uh, well, if that's the way we feel singularly, uh, when we get together, uh, we ought to have church. Uh, we ought to let God help us. Uh, I know sometimes that the devil Watch the cloud to a mind. Uh, but friend, if you need deliverance, uh, deliverance is here. Uh, if you need help, uh, help is here. Uh, if you need a home, uh, if you need God, uh, he's with you, friend, if you reach out to him. Amen. Tell Sister Ashley, get us a song. I choose revival. Revival is prayer bread. It's word fed. And it's spirit led. That word bread, B R E D, means generated, produced, contrived, educated. Amen. Revival is prayer generated. Oh, it's prayer produced. Hallelujah. It's prayer educated. Word fed. Fed means to nourish, to cherish, to supply with nutrients. Amen. The word will nourish me. The word will supply me with everything that's healthy for my soul. Spirit led. You know what led means? L-E-D. That's not a light bulb, but it's something that will guide you and lead you. It's to show the method of obtaining an object. I need to be spirit led. And what's going to generate revival? Prayer, prayer, word fed, spirit led, prayer, and the word, and the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, you want a trinity? There's a trinity. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I believe in it. I believe in the word, the prayer, and the spirit. Come on. I believe in right doctrine. Hallelujah. And if we want to see God move, it's time for us to individually make up in our mind and say, Get ready. Stand with me tonight. I choose revival. I choose revival. I make the choice. Here's my altar call. I'm just going to tell you. I choose revival. I'm making the choice. What do you choose?